Okay. I told you I had an important meeting. Ooh, an important meeting. Okay. Yeah, they're recording. You want to say hi? Say hi Tell to the camera. Hey. Hi. Tell hey. them your name. My Do name's Maceo. What is one word you would use to describe yourself, Maceo? Mm. Did I say that right? What, what, what's one word you would use? You got a, a fun word? What's the word of the day? Tell what's your favorite word? word of What's your favorite word? Any word. Pick a word. Peaceful. Peaceful. Man. Wow. I love that. That's so impactful. Do you, what, are, what, are, what are the thoughts that you think of when you think of the word peaceful? Um, that I like hanging out with my friends. Mm -hmm. And you like it when they're peaceful? Yeah. 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 That's really awesome. I appreciate you sharing, man. That's good stuff. I love you. You gonna answer all the questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, you want me to ask you another one? You want you want another? Yeah, exactly. Tell him to ask you. You want another question? Yeah. Okay. No, 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 Tell him, tell him to ask you some math questions. Can you ask me some math questions? Ooh, like say, math? Some, say some hard ones. Okay. Can you say some hard Where ones? Where are we at? We at addition, subtraction, multiplication. We have multiplication and division, baby. Multiplication? Okay. We have division. This is the one. I, I was always challenged by the six. I have All calculators. All the ones that, that were six. Listen, so what's six times six? 36. Wow. I was always challenged by the sevens, too. What's seven times eight? Um, 56. Oh, my man, I found out. <laughs> hey, yes, sir. I got one. How far do you go up? Do you go up to the 12s? Not not just the 12. Can we challenge it? Oh, he, he, he said be hard at that. He not, said, come on, I got one for you. I love this one. No, What's I, 12 times 12? 144. I right. can go, I I can go up to 12. Wow. Past 12. Past 12. Past 12. So much. So much? I can even I can even go to a to a hundred trillion. Oh whoa. I, that. Whoa. I be trying to shave that joint off sometimes. Why be like, why don't you leave it alone? I'll mess around and put a, a big daddy cane slit in my joint yeah, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I tried to, you know, I tried to just hit the little Hitting the little grades with the nose hair clippers, Jinx, and that joint did like that one time. And I just sliced my joint. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, man, in a little while, I'm going to be walking around here like Whoopi Goldberg, man. Nah, hey, that's no joke, man. I took Little Man for his first one two days ago. Oh, that's 25. That's 25. <laughs> For a kid? I was like, for a, for a little kid cut. Yeah, for a two year old? Yeah, I thought kids were a little cheaper than the dog. Yes, sir. Five. Listen. I need a dog five. Oh my gosh. All day long, I need a dog five. <laughs> Like, and it's like, like I don't even understand. Like, what made y'all decide to like? What you gave y'all the right? The guard. Yeah. 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 What? Twenty five dollars. Dog. Like. My, once, once somebody did it the first time. That's it. I that was it. And my, I don't get me wrong. Like, you deserve to make a decent living. Man. But if I got three kids and I can't walk out of there and I got a kid to cut to, dog. And it costs me a yard. Dog. Bro. Dog. <laughs> and you taking a picture of me to put on your social media? Oh, like, oh you, man. To get another yard. Right. <laughs> Right. That's right? something. Yeah. yeah my right. dude, my dude, right. cut my head now. I um, big, Ke <laughs> big Kevin, a move, so I don't really go to him as often. I go to another dude now, but when I started going to him, he was like he was edging me up, and he was doing the, you know doing the Beijing. So he yeah. boom, all this dark black, dark black. <laughs> so the first time I was like, yo, what's you know like what, what we doing? Like he was like thirty. I'm like, okay, let's so edge up. But, you know, he doing all of this, right? Cool. Paid him to 30. Mm -hmm. So once I, that was my regular price. So once I stopped getting to Beijing, I was you like, yo. I said, yo, what's the, like, what's the price? Right. 30. Excuse me, sir? But I, I don't get the color. I don't get the color. There's no more color, so that's it. And he was doing the, the airbrush joint where he's spraying the joint. Okay, so he does do aesthetics. Okay. Right, but I wasn't getting that anymore. Called I was started using the Man, I said, yo, get me out of here, man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, once I figure out how to use a T line right. and just do this right here. I'm gonna YouTube it out. I'm gonna be the YouTube man. Psh. Welcome to Community Spotlight, brought to you by Bro Code TV Productions and hosted by the Bros. Join us on this dynamic journey as we shine a spotlight on local agents who are making a profound difference in their communities. These remarkable individuals bring creativity, 
wellness, and purpose to the forefront as they tackle challenges, nurture their families, and celebrate successes. In each episode, we explore their unique stories and initiatives, offering an inspiring glimpse into the world of community transformation. Get ready to be inspired by those who are leaving an undeniable mark on their neighborhoods. Welcome to another powerful episode of the Bro Code Show Community Spotlight. Tonight we're sitting down with a man who wears many hats, Dion Showtime Chavis. He's a father, advocate, husband, music connoisseur, and the creator of the Glad Dad movement. Dion's journey took him from a 20-year career in hip-hop world to becoming a leading voice on fatherhood and youth advocacy. Dion, what's good, brother? How you feeling? What's good, brother? Glad to be here, man. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. We're at the crib, too, man. I got to ask, man, because, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't just invite people to the crib. Just anybody. For sure. Right? All right. For sure. For sure. So, why us, man? Why bring the bro code to the Chavis domain? The, the, the humble abode, the Casa La Chavis. Yes, sir. Uh, I thought it was important, man. We, when we talked about doing this interview and having this conversation, I thought it was important to... Um, be in my natural element and 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 i think here is 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 probably where i'm the most comfortable um it's where i'm the most vulnerable and it's where i am the most authentic so i felt like i could give you all some things um in this space that i couldn't give you if we were to meet at a barnes and noble or we were to meet at uh you know a co-working space because just you know this is my home like before the cameras came on i was eating apple pie and my son was down here and I just felt like it would be a little bit a little bit better content for y'all if I'm able to to come through and, and really just be myself. Indeed, man. And we indeed appreciate you for sure. seeing us fit <laughs> to be part of the humble abode. So, everybody don't get here. You saw the sign on the door. Like everybody don't get here. Indeed, man. I already know, brother. And I appreciate it, man. Long time coming. So for those listening tonight, we'll be discussing the rewards of fatherhood. Good times in the radio world how he found purpose after being let go from radio, his mental health journey, black love, and of course, Glad Dad Movement. But first, let's have some fun, bro. For sure. Uh, This one right here is called The Soundtrack to Your Life. Okay, okay. All right? So if you could pick, like if you, being from the music world and and for over what, almost three decades, right? Two, three decades? Uh, Yeah, we were like two and a half, yeah. Yeah, man, you've heard a lot, seen a lot. But if you could pick three songs, three soundtracks to your life, three songs, mm. what would they be? Three songs. Um, well, my favorite hip hop song of all times is uh, Freeway, What We Do Is Wrong. Mm. That is my favorite hip hop song of all times. Uh, so that would have to be on the soundtrack uh, just because that gives me such a great um, feeling uh, when I hear it and it, it kind of encapsulates, uh, not that I've done anything wrong, but <laughs> just the feeling of that song, man, it, it, it just really puts me back um, in a place like early 2000s, like The Wire was popping on TV, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like it just really, really um, kind of puts me in that place. Uh, another song would be, hmm, man, I would probably say... Uh, Big Daddy Kane's mm. Ain't No Half Stepping. Mm. Uh, that's the song that came out. Yeah, shout out Kane. That's a song that came out in 1988. And for me, that was the first time that I really um, recognized what hip hop was. That song is, is what really kind of made me fall in love with hip hop. Um, and the third song would be. Uh, the Roots and off of the um, Things Fall Apart album, Hip Hop, You the Love of My Life. Mm. It's like that, y'all. And it sounds so nice. Hip Hop, You the Love of My Life. Uh, and that's just because hip hop has shaped so much of who I am. Um, and it's really, really brought me to a place where I've honestly been able to travel the world and see things yeah. that I would not have been able to see if it weren't for hip hop. Yeah. And that's, you know, hip hop is my first love. Discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with Bro Code TV Productions. From the artistry of photography to the magic of videography, the world of podcast production, exclusive red carpet services, captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, 
and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Bro Code TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocodetvproductions.com. We're here to make any room better. My first love, man. You took it back on that one. I'm not even going to get into movies. I'm going to keep moving because right, if right, I don't, right. I, I'll, I'll be here all day. So you are a huge advocate for fatherhood. For sure. And for youth. Uh, you're also a father yourself. For sure. Is that right? Yeah. Talk to me about the playlist for a father, man. If, the, if you had to create one, man, if there was a fatherhood playlist, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I see all this these albums behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are a connoisseur of music, but if you can take your memories back, what would that look like? Well, it's, it's, it's funny that you say that because when I first started working in fatherhood and doing fatherhood work, um, I was heading to do a workshop in California, a fatherhood workshop, my first workshop ever. And one of the things that I wanted to do was, um, maybe not my first, maybe not my first workshop ever, um, but maybe definitely like second or third. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was to create a playlist for the attendees and put it on a CD. So I hit up my man DJ Deluxe, shout out DJ Deluxe, and asked him to create a fatherhood mixtape for me. And we worked together to create a fatherhood mixtape. I still have it uh, somewhere, but uh, some of the songs that I can remember, of course, Ed O.G., Be a Father to Your Child, mm -hmm. um, uh, now to 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 kind of moving into to uh, current times, uh, Jay Z's legacy mm. would be up there. You know, legacy, legacy, yeah, legacy, yeah. like excellency. Yeah. Um, what else would be up there, man? Uh, what's going on? Marvin Gaye would be up there. Mm. Um, what else would be up there? Uh, Naughty by Nature there's a Naughty by Nature song where Tretch talks about being a ghetto bastard mm. where he talks about growing up and his father not being there um, that would be on it um, I think there's a lot of songs out there that, that, that deal with um, that de oh Nas Daughters like that's an anthem for every father that has a, a, a daughter yeah. or is raising a daughter I think it's important for uh, them to hear that song and really really understand like what he's saying in that record so I think there's a lot of songs out there man um, specifically hip hop records because of course hip hop was birthed um, from a generation where we were seeing fathers not always in the home and I think that it's really really dope that the culture and the music can kind of uh, speak to that mm -hmm. you know what I mean I love that. I love that. And we probably could, that list could go on for yeah, days. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm forgetting tons of records. Tons and we'll, of we'll records. circle back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure it'll pop to yeah. you, man. But I, I want to dive into early childhood mm -hmm. and, and talk about those earlier influences. Correct me if I'm wrong. Hampton Road VA, is that, is that 757? Yeah, yeah, the seven yeah. Seven Cities. Yeah, for right? sure. That's definitely, that's, definitely from the 757. So that means you might hear Jank. You might hear a thing of missile, like you might hear. Talk to him. You might hear few, like as, you know we. The joints. You, you, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, a little more universal. Okay. Jank is, okay. Jank is seven five seven. For sure. so that's our word. Um, <laughs> You've claimed joint, that. Is, joint is like more East Coast abroad. Okay. okay. Jank is ours. Like we own that. So um, get the vocabulary right, just in case we hear that missile means what? If, something if, is really good. Okay. So if something is really good. It's a missile. It's a scud. Uh, so, you know, the food that we ate, that apple pot I just had, that joint was a missile. Like, <laughs> that joint was a missile, you feel me? Um, so if something is really, really good, it's a missile. A jank is just a noun. It's a person, place, or thing. Okay. Anything can be referred to as a jank. I could be uh, talking about the Bro Code podcast. I'm like, yeah, I was on that jank. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? I could be talking about the girl walking down the street. And I'm like, oh, look at that jank right there. Like, it's a person, place, or a thing. It's I just, got it. We really got to clear it up, man. Right here on the book code, we're about education, inspiration. For sure. For sure. And having some fun with it at the same time. For Thank sure. you for clarifying. For sure. That. Listen, That's man, I'm all about that 757. Man. <laughs> Indeed. So take me back to that space, man. Like, what was the matriarchs, patriarchs, influential people in your life growing up that helped to shape you into what you are today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was born um, in, in, in 1980, right? So I was born to... Uh, a mother who was in a relationship that was somewhat abusive 
Uh, my father was uh, not physically abusive, but he was verbally and emotionally abusive to my mom. Um, but he was also, uh, you know, he struggled with substance abuse, right? So he struggled with kind of finding his way through life. And, you know, now as a man who is uh, a little bit more seasoned, I kind of understand that a little bit more, right? You're trying to find your way. So you, you find unhealthy ways to cope with life. And, I, you know, that that's what my dad did. And um, unfortunately, he was shot and killed when I was 11 years old. Uh, my mom left him when I was about three, I believe. Uh, I was about two or three. My mom decided to leave that, you know, sort of toxic situation. She decided it wasn't the best place for her and, and, and her son, so she, she bounced. And, um, you know, it was a, a, a kind of a split custody situation, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I would spend every other weekend sometimes with him, and but most of the time I was with my mom. So, you know, my mom raised me. Um, I didn't have um, any, 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 any father figures in my life, really, Growing up, I had uncles and nep uh, uh, uncles and cousins and um, people like that, but that that role of a father um, wasn't there for me. Um, so my, you know, my mom being her, me being her only child, you know, mm -hmm. we we developed a really really strong bond, a really strong relationship, um, to the point where, you know, when she retired, you know, at sixty five a couple of years ago. I told her that it was time for her to, you know, leave Virginia and move down yeah. here and, and live with us. Yeah. Um, so, you know, growing up, I leaned heavy on hip hop. Um, my, I have an older cousin who I, you know, I always give credit to my old, my older cousin, Dwayne, um, who introduced me to hip hop. Right. And he's someone who whenever I have conversations about like hip hop and how I started loving hip hop, it starts with him. Yeah, you know, and we still argue and talk about hip hop to this day, <laughs> right? Like thirty-five, thirty, however many years later, we still converse and and and, and exchange text messages about um, hip hop to this day. Discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with Broco TV Productions, from the artistry of photography to the magic of videography, the world of podcast production. Exclusive red carpet services, captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Broco TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocotvproductions.com. We're here to make any room better. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's tip, tap dance on that just for a moment, man. How does it make you feel now? Uh, Forty four, correct? Yeah, we're the same age. Born nineteen eighty. I'm May first. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a June baby. Uh, yeah, right by, right behind, right. <laughs> so, uh, I too, I didn't meet my dad that I can remember until my early teens. Mm -hmm. I might have been here and there when. Um, my mother and my father would come to unite to be together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in spaces of intimacy, but it was early, early teens that I can remember that. And I'll be honest with you, at 10, 11, 12, because the, co the conversation wasn't had mm -hmm. of the why they weren't together. Like yeah, yeah. My parents were never married. So I oftentimes thought it was me. Mm. Right? So I would, I would carry this burden mm -hmm. in thinking that I was the common denominator. So I, the reason I'm sharing that mm -hmm. with you is I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. You just shared on camera the dynamics of your household um, was without the father. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that impact you today at 44, if at all? So I think for me, I was probably the opposite of you. I never thought it was me. I always thought it was him. Like, I always thought it was, oh, like, he, you know, got drunk and did this. Or he, you know, he would show up at my mom's job and kind of, you know, be real belligerent. So I always felt like, oh, he was, I can't, I want to say what I want to say, but he was a little, he was a little off, you feel me? Like, um, so I always felt like there was something going on with him. And it wasn't until later on in life that I started to understand the struggles of a man uh, dealing with, uh, depression, dealing with a family history of mental illness, dealing with substance abuse problems, dealing with not being able to stay employed, dealing with 
a court system where he wasn't able to see his son as much as he wanted to. Like, say what you want to say about my dad. Like, there was no question that he loved me, mm -hmm. right? I've ne I never questioned that. And I have other siblings, and we have that conversation where, you know, we talk about what his actions were as a man versus what his actions were as a father, mm -hmm. right? Because we can, we, can, we can have the best intentions, but we don't always know how to execute. Sure. So, for me... My focus has always been as a father to my number one goal is always to be has always been to be sure that my kids don't know what it feels like to grow without a dad. Right. I want to be I want to be sure, even though I never had a blueprint, I wanted to be sure that my kids never knew that feeling of. Who can I talk to when there's something going on? Mm -hmm. Who can I have a conversation with? about xyz and those are things that in my life at 44 now that I, I start to look back on like yo what would it look like if i had an old head that i could have this conversation yeah. with right now about life about you know about marriage about relationships about raising kids i don't have that um so now that's where for me it really starts to kick in honestly as a child like i didn't it didn't bother me at all mm -hmm. i never did i honestly didn't even think about it until um my 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 sister she's my sister but on my dad's side we, i don't call her my half sister that's my sister right until we were introduced to each other um later on in life mm. and her uh story of, of of being raised with my dad like he's her, her oldest so she has fonder memories than i do right she can tell you things about him that i can't Right. She can tell me things about him that she sees in me that I don't even know, mm -hmm. right? Because she was with him for probably 17, 18 years. Um, I'm not able to do that, but I'm able to have conversations with her and make, you know, even if it's conversations about how it felt like when I reached the age that he was when he died, right? I think my dad died when he was 35, maybe. Wow. I think he might have been 35. Wow. And... When I reached that age, I was struggling with some stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like, yo, I'm, I'm at the age now where... It makes like, you reflect. It makes you reflect. Like, right. homeboy didn't even make it. Right. Like, he got killed on his birthday. Right. Wow. <laughs> like, this is... Th th he ain't even make it here. Like, I'm here. I'm... I'm, mm. I'm, I'm I made it. But, sis, I need you to help me out. Like, mm -hmm. I need you to... I need to... I need you to help walk me through this thing. Yeah. Because I don't know what it was like for him at 30. It's uncharted water. Yeah. Because right? yeah. there's no one there to tell you about experiences right. that... Wow. Right. I don't even like, yeah. am I even supposed to be here at 35? Yeah. Wow. Like those are the types of thoughts that I was having. Um, so it didn't really, it, it honestly did not really hit me mm. until I got to be that age that he was when he was taken away. Man, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. I'm sure there's many of us that uh, struggle, right? We all deal with different devils on different mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you for sharing that. I hope that helps somebody, man. Uh, quarter century. In the music industry. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Dub five. I've seen some things. Indeed. Like, <laughs> hey, we'll talk a little bit more and dig a little bit more deeper into it later on in the conversation. I, I, this, I, I never thought I would see something that is happening, and I don't know when this is going to air, but never thought I'd see what's going on right now, like the mm. biggest story in the music industry. I never thought mm. I'd see that day. But yeah, it's, and, and, it's and we, we got to talk about it. Since you talked about it, right? Like, okay. as, since we're there, you, you didn't open up the can of words. Sorry, you know, it's, it's not on my list. I didn't know. But I'd love to hear your thoughts, man. The music industry now, good, bad, ugly, right, wrong, indifferent. Yeah. Do we throw away a genre? Do we now, ex it now put aside some of the dopeness, some of the things that we sat in the club and sweat out T-shirts about sure. because of the things that happened in spaces that, in most cases, the, the, the normal man, me and you, mm -hmm. would never see or be a part of in sure. the first place. For sure. So separating the man from the music, what's your thoughts? I'm at a place in my life where I don't have a heaven or hell to send anybody to, right? I can't necessarily be the judge. I can't be the jury. I can say for me, it's too many records like to let them go like i can't i can't and I, i'm not gonna hold you i'm not gonna hold you i ain't gonna hold you or fold you i will tell you i, I had an easier time with robert mm. um and even with robert there's two songs that he's featured on 
that I've never been able to let go. And I don't say this publicly. A lot. I've said it before, so it's cool if I say it here. Yeah. Two songs that I just have not been able to let go of Robert. It's not one of those things where I broadcast it and, mm -hmm. and you know, I don't you know promote it, nothing. But in mm -hmm. the privacy of my own home, there's two songs that I can't let go that he's featured on. Yeah. I know AJ ain't nothing but the numbers probably. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, he's featured on he's featured on uh, a, a Biggie song, and he's featured on a song with Mary. That's right. That he's one with Biggie. On, uh, I can't I, let it go. I, I'm effing you tonight. Yes, sir. That's I can't right. let it go. Got it, got I can't let, can't let that one go. Yeah. I can't let it go. Judge, judge me if you need to. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't let it go. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And his features on. Right. Right. Yeah, no, no. Songs I can't let go. Everything else is gone. That step in the name of love. All that stuff is gone. Yeah. yeah. Chocolate, all, gone. Yeah. F you tonight and share my world is my favorite R&B album of all yeah. times. Uh, he's got a record on there with Mary, and I just I just can't let it go. Uh, but with that being said, um, I honestly think it will be it's too hard to 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 let if we if if if, if we say we gonna cancel Puff, like it's too hard, like because that means you got to cancel all Biggie. Mm -hmm. Total is my favorite girl group mm -hmm. of all times. Mm -hmm. Anything gotta, with bad boy, period. Anything with bad boy, period. Mary? Mary. You gotta cancel Faith. Yeah. Like, you gotta cancel Joe to see. I don't think you gotta cancel all the others. You just gotta cancel. He produced it. Out. Right. Things that he's on, you gotta cancel. He on all of them. He produced all of them. Yeah, he produced them. <laughs> you, produced like, them he, you wouldn't know it unless you know it. Right. So that's why I don't even, I don't even wanna get into it. Like, right. I'm, I'm I cool. <laughs> like, and I, I honestly, that 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 last album, that love album, is is was the album of the year. What a year or two ago, I think that that album still won. Like I'm, I'm just not ready. Like we're just out here to put the messages out. We can't confirm or deny. Right. But we believe everybody's perspective. Right. Matters. Right. Because right. music is the heartbeat, especially for us as a culture. It, it got us through good times, yeah. bad times, memorable yeah. times. Yeah. Man, that's tough. Yeah. And I, I'm yeah. not that's I'm not gonna defend that man. I'm not right. gonna be like nah, I believe that the chickens are coming home to roost. I believe that if you do dirt, you're gonna you gonna if it's gonna eventually catch up with you. All of those things I believe to be true. I'm not a point in my journey where I'm ready to let the bad boy sound go. <laughs> take that, take that. That's, that's, <laughs> that being said, moving right along. That's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got. Discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with Broco TV Productions. From the artistry of photography to the magic of videography, the world of podcast production, exclusive red carpet services, captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Broco TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocotvproductions.com. We're here to make any room better. <laughs> Keep it in the music industry, man. Like, Give me all that knowledge. And did you think that that was happened for you as a kid? Like as a kid, no. it was was music was that the thing? Um, music was the thing, but I didn't know that music would be my journey. Mm -hmm. Music was always the thing, and looking back now, I wish I would have done things to hone in on um, music a lot more than I did. Right, because there's people that like I was the kid in high school walking around with my headphones on mm -hmm. listening to KRS One, mm -hmm. right? I was that kid. Like I was headphones on, you're not even the teachers, you take your headphones off. You know, <laughs> now the, the, the cell phones is that what everybody's is harping on now in the schools, but back then it was the head mm -hmm. you know, the headphones. Mm -hmm. I was that kid. I was the kid, you know, going to my mom's job, I had to have my Walkman on, right? That was me. So as a consumer, it was always in me. It was I was always the one who you know, had to have the new hip hop music, who had to have the new Tribe Called Quest tape, who had to have new Wu-Tang CD, mm -hmm. who would wait, me and my wife talk about this all the time. Like when the second Wu-Tang CD came out, we, she's older than me, so I didn't have, I didn't get to do this, but she stood outside of a record store called DJ's Records and Tapes on Tidewater Drive in Norfolk <laughs> at midnight, because back then CDs would drop at midnight. So she stood outside and waited for the CD, right? I wasn't of age. So I wasn't able to do that, but if I was, I would have, I would have been, I would have been there. Um, but you know, I grew up with people. I don't know if y'all, if if uh, uh, Phil Thornton. So Phil Thornton is a huge 
uh, music and TV guy now. Like he does uh, TV one. He was a, a vice president over at uh, one of the gospel labels and all of the documentaries that you see on TV one now, the Luther joint that's coming mm-hmm. out. Like he's behind all of that. But I remember when we were 12 and 13 years old, he was interning at the radio station. Like he was the first person to come back to school and be like, yo, I met boys, the men. Wow. Right, and like I, I reflect on that and say, yo, like he knew at an early age that that's what his journey was gonna be. You know what I mean? I didn't know that this was going to take me um, to the places that it's taken me. Right? Because I only got in the radio because I wanted to. I wanted to make beats. Yeah. Like I was making beats on the MPC, and I was doing. I got into college radio as a way to hand off my beats. Mm. Like that was gonna be my way into the industry. Like I was like radio. Like I'm just. I'm just up here. Like they say, I got a good voice. So I tried, tried out for it, but only because like, at this point, like rappers were doing college tours mm-hmm. and I can remember like Fat Joe during a college tour. I can remember interviewing Grand Pooba from Brand Nubian. Mm-hmm. Like I can remember interviewing Cormega, like all these, I was like, oh word, like I'm, <laughs> you're in the mix. I'm yeah. in the mix mix, yeah. you feel me? Yeah. So I was like, let me get these, get my little whack beats that I <laughs> put together on this MPC. Um and you know the journey took me it it, it took me twenty years yeah it gave, bro. Me, it gave me twenty years is is there biggest memories is there greatest moments <sighs> is there pivotal like yo this right here springboarded me I remember that when I did this this connected to this almost getting fired mm. yeah almost getting fired is is probably and I tell this story about you know how I, I left the radio station early um, one night and um, at that point in time you were supposed to stay overnight if you worked the late night shift you were supposed mm. to stay overnight because this is before technology really took off yeah, and you had to like you had to, yeah, <laughs> for, for, yeah for lack of a better word like at midnight you had to be sure that the joint rolled over mm. and I left early and it didn't roll over. Mm. So that means from midnight was until, nothing until six in the morning when the Russ Park Morning Show was scheduled to come on, there was nothing. There was dead air. Silence. Silent. No commercials. Ooh, nobody got paid. No, 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 no. And it was on Showtime. Yeah, it was all on me. All, a young Showtime, too. Yeah. Young and dumb. Ooh. And my boss called me the next morning and he cussed me out, man. Ooh. My boss, shout out to Parrish Brown, man. <laughs> my guy cussed me out and, you know, he was a football coach too. Like, oh, he was good with it too. Oh, man. He put words he, together. He, he made me cry. He made me cry. <laughs> like, he, t- he, t- he taught me so dirty. Like, he, he taught, taught me so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he taught me so dirty, cuz. Um, and I'm standing there like, <laughs> yes, sir. I'm going to do this, sir. <laughs> Looking stupid, right? <laughs> All because I wanted to leave early. And um, that's really what, what, what made me start taking radio serious. Mm. Um, if it wasn't for that, I probably, I wouldn't be in this situation. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Mm, man, I, say, I never took it serious. They say purpose is birth through pain. Yeah, so, yeah. a lot of pain. Shout out to that cousin out, man. Shout that, out that, that cousin, that's my guy. He's he a, he a pastor now, man. He preaching the word. That sounds about right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, sounds yeah. about right. He I might, see, you he might still cut you out if you if <laughs> if <laughs> catch him on catch him on the right one. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. He got it from Central too. He's a Central Green Eagle. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. This delayed. I want you to talk to 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 that. How old were you then, Showtime? I was 20, I don't think my daughter was born yet, so I had to be like 22. So I want you to talk to the 22-year-olds 22 22 out there right now that are considering going into the music industry, in the music industry, yeah. are in the creative arts space. Uh, what are the words of wisdom? What are the thoughts? What, what would you say to them? Hone your craft. Hone your craft build your relationships you know one of the things that i was a big proponent of when i was when i was in radio and even now still um it was building the relationships of the youngins that come up right because i wanted to be sure that the the, the youngins that were coming after me were well prepared because i felt like there weren't a lot of institutions in media that were preparing our young people so i was big on having my interns and putting my interns through the fire, right? It was nothing for me to like have an intern and like they would be in the studio on the boards for the first time and I would just leave them mm. and just let them figure it out. 
right? I will be in the lobby or upstairs somewhere just listening because mm -hmm. I know what to listen for. But leaving them there and helping them like get that experience, that hands-on experience of, oh, what do I do now? What do we, you know what I mean? Um, that was always important to me. So I think honing your craft is important. I think building relationships is important and keeping up with um, with the technology, man, because mm -hmm. this technology is moving fast. Yeah, like I co-sign all that, bro. Yeah, it's moving fast, right. it's moving yeah. fast. Discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with Broco TV Productions. From the artistry of photography to the magic of videography, the world of podcast production, exclusive red carpet services, captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Broco TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocodetvproductions.com. We're here to make any room better. Relationships are a big deal. It's, I believe that's the equity of the earth. Mm. Right? It's mm. a gift that keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Because it runs deep. You don't know how far and how wide it will go. Yeah, right? for sure. Because it's a trickle down effect. For sure. Uh, and then learning those new skills, being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Man, that's the one. That's the one. That's, that's when one. you get stretched mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you go into uncharted waters. Right? Well, that's how they found and created a map in the first place. So mm -hmm. I love that, man. I appreciate you sharing yeah. that. And if, if, you know, if you don't stretch, you don't grow. Right? That's how we grow. We grow from stretching. Oh, you don't stretch, you don't grow. I love that. Let's slide into this thing called marriage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's talk about it, man. Been married to a wonderful woman. You talked a little bit about her earlier on, just based on what I've heard you communicate from upstairs, downstairs, what I see <laughs> behind you, and what you gave away a little bit about it. Right. She loves music as well. For sure. More than me, believe it or not. More than you. More than me. More than you. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Let's talk about how marriage has supported your growth and uh, you know, what does black love mean to you? So it's 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 dope because again, I'll say this, if it weren't for my wife, I wouldn't be in this situation either. Right? Because for me, my wife and I met when I was nineteen years old. No, when I was eighteen years old. Um we met when I was eighteen years old. I was in school to be a chef. I was in culinary art school. And um, that summer, I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. My wife, now my wife, she wasn't my wife then. We had probably only known each other for a couple of months. She was the one that said, as I was trying to figure this thing out called life at 19 years old, she was the one who said, why don't you write down all of the things that you're passionate about hmm and kind of hunker down on one or two of those things. And I don't even remember what I wrote down, but I know that music was one of the things, right? right. right. <laughs> um, and that is what made me decide to go to uh, Norfolk State University. That is what uh, persuaded me to start pursuing uh, knowledge and how to produce, right? I wanted to be the next DJ Premier. Mm. That was my that was my uh, that was my goal. Mm. Premier has always been my idol, um, and if it wasn't for that conversation, I don't again I don't know where I would be. Uh, so I give I give her uh, a lot of that credit, and I you know I'm sure she remembers that, but that's not something that we um, have talked about recently. But you know that conversation for a young I, I wasn't even I wasn't even Showtime then like yeah. it was just. Dion that go to Johnson and Wales. Like I was supposed to be a chef. You feel me? Um and, 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 and that's what made me start to like look into, oh, okay, this is what a producer does. This is how um a producer, you know, chops samples and things like that. You know, and the internet was a thing then, but it's not like it is now. Right. Um, so having her along with me on this journey, man, has been um, has been life changing, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, 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 it's nothing like having somebody on the journey with you who knows you and yeah. who can put you in check when you need to be put in check, right? Mm -hmm. um, because if you've been there since the beginning, you have every authority and every right to put me in check when I get, you know, when I need to be checked, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm, 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 sometimes you need somebody to pull your kite string, yeah, right? And yeah. she oftentimes is the one who will, um, pull that kite string for me as you know oftentimes as a creative 
I can I can I can fly a little willy nilly. Like yeah. I can, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. Then I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna bring it back, and we're gonna do this two times. But she's always the one who's like, "All right, cool, I'm with it." But let's think about how it looks. Let's think about how we're gonna pull it off. Um, and yeah. I think you know, being married is dope, man, because you have that. You know, you have that helpmate, right? Mm. You have that partner. You have mm. that person on your team. And you know that you're 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 working towards the same goal, yeah. Right. And once you once you put that plan into action, it's like, boom! Like we, this is the game plan. This is where we're going with it. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, man. I love it. Let's talk about how that ties into your purpose, because mm-hmm. at, mm-hmm. at this moment you are walking in purpose on purpose daily as an advocate for youth as well as fatherhood with the glad dad. For sure. Now we're going to talk more about that uh, in the second half of the show, but I want to talk a little. I want you to talk to me about how marriage helps your purpose. Yeah. How yeah. does it benefit and with that helpmate as you talk? Yeah, about I, you know, I I think that for me, marriage helps my purpose because um, it helps me to align the work that I'm doing. So. As someone, like I was recently diagnosed with ADHD a couple of years, about a year or so ago. And I, I can be all over the place at times. My Me idea, too. I can I can have some very, very big ideas, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but I know that the ideas and the plans and the things that I want to execute, I know that it, 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 it has to come together in a way that makes sense for the people who live here, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It all has to make sense mm-hmm. for the people who live in this house and the people who, honestly, they're my boss, mm-hmm. right? The, the the wife, the two kids, they are the boss mm-hmm. because I answer mm-hmm. to them when it's all said and done. Fourth on the pole pole. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and there's a dog in here, so <laughs> actually fit. Maybe six, because you right. got mom dukes. Right, right. And, and the dog, <laughs> right? right. 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 So, so I have to answer to all of those people. If something goes wrong, I answer to them. The lights get turned off, I answer to them. The water gets turned off, I got to answer to them, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, so being able to, to know that um, I'm not doing it alone, right? And, and, and with the work that I do with Glad Dad, I travel a lot now. Like mm-hmm. I'm traveling more now than ever. So with having a six-year-old son who's on the spectrum, with having a 20-year-old daughter who is away in college, having that other person, teammate here to say okay i'm going to be gone for two days you hold down the house you take the boy to school pick the boy up blah 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 blah, blah. you do all these things while i'm away when i come home you get a break i'll hop in you know what i'm saying like just having that kind of like that tag team role where it's not something that is um specific to Okay, you're this gender, so you mm-hmm. do this. We right. gotta do a work for us. Okay? Right. Right. We got we gotta do a work for us to make sure that everything that we're doing aligns with that purpose. Yeah. Right. And my purpose is to uh, help families and help fathers and help adults connect with young people. Mm-hmm. Discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with Broco TV Productions. From the artistry of photography to the magic of videography. The world of podcast production, exclusive red carpet services, captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Broco TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocotvproductions.com. We're here to make any room better. I love it, man. I love it. I appreciate you sharing that. Let's slide into self-care, man, like pouring into your own cup, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, finding the space of happiness, which is your responsibility. For sure. Right. And your responsibility alone and aligning with that. So with everything that you do from fatherhood of your own to advocating for others in business, how do you prioritize self-care and mental wellness? What practices have helped you most on that journey? I'll be I'll be transparent with you. Um, I am a huge proponent of telling and informing folks of the things that they need to do. Right. I'm a huge proponent of mental health, a huge proponent of black men taking control of their mental health. I have a therapist. I 
uh, take medication for anxiety and depression and all of those things. But in this moment, and I like to, because again, I, I like to speak to things that are in this moment, right? Mm -hmm. In this moment, I am struggling with my own self-care. Mm -hmm. And that is something that my therapist is constantly on me about. And I say this because I know that there are other men who are watching this who are taking on the brunt of uh, the things that are going on at home. They're taking on the brunt of the things that are going on at work. They're mm -hmm. taking, you know what I mean? They're dealing with life because at this age, life be life in as the people yeah. say. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you, man, as a 44 year old adult, I've never been on a vacation as an adult. Wow. Right. Um, now, of course, I've traveled for work and I sure. travel here and there, but I cannot name a time when I have gone uh, to a place where there's been no work involved, mm. no laptop, no cell phone for mm. business. Mm. I'm just going here to go. And my therapist and I talk about this at this point. We're talking about it every two weeks because she's trying to get me to take a vacation of some sort. And I'm just like, I don't have the capacity for it right now. My life isn't set up for that. Um, so I think for anyone who's watching this, it's important to understand that as I am struggling with that, if you are struggling with that, we have to do better. Yeah. Right. And a part of self care is not only taking care of our physical health, but it's taking care of our mental health. Right. So what does it look like for us to, uh, be sure that we're going to the doctor for our physicals every year? What does it look like at this age for us to make sure that we are, uh, if we have a history of, of colon cancer, that we're getting our colonoscopies? What does it look like to be sure that as we hit 45, we're getting our prostates checked? Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, self-care is more of um, making sure I'm taking care of those things, but also still trying to figure out, all right, what can I do to give myself um, a break mm. when I need it? Mm. Because honestly, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to take it. I don't know how to uh, accept it, right? So now I'm in a space where I am uh, learning and figuring out this chapter of life where there's supposed to be a little bit more leisure involved and just trying to see what that looks like. Wow, man. I, I appreciate you sharing, man. I appreciate your transparency. I appreciate your vulnerability. I, I, my hope is, is outside of it helping me that it helps somebody else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more after the break about fatherhood, your purpose, the glad dad, what's next for that. Uh, and also the joys of fatherhood. For sure. Yeah. Right here on the bro coach show. We got my man Dion. I didn't ask you this. I got to ask you this before you go. Yes, sir. How'd you get the no name showtime? How'd that be? <laughs> so as I was, um, starting in college radio the night before I, I got accepted to do the the morning show on uh, WNSB Hot 91 at Norfolk State University I was trying to figure out a name I could not think of a name that night it was a uh, Sunday night and that night I'm sitting in uh, the living room at my mom's crib and the name Showtime just kind of popped into my head I was like uh, I don't know whatever uh Five minutes later, Showtime at the Apollo comes on TV. Like, that was oh, it. That's it. That's that was it. it. That was it. That was the alignment. That, that was, it. was divine. And I was like, I that's it. That. Right. I, and I've been, I've been Showtime ever since. And then it kind of transitioned into Mr. Talk of the Town, probably in uh, early 2000s. Showtime, Mr. Talk of the Town. I added that tagline and just kind of ran with it, man. I love it, man. You got <laughs> it. We'll be back on the Bro Code Show Community Spotlight with my man, Dion Showtime Chavis. Discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with Broco TV Productions. From the artistry of photography to the magic of videography, the world of podcast production, exclusive red carpet services, captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Broco TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocodetvproductions.com we're here to make any room better all right and we are back on the community spotlight i'm joined with my man at the showtime excuse me dion showtime shapes that's it that's it I'll oh. tell you, call me call me what you know me as. Call, uh. me, call me how you met me that's it <laughs> appreciate it first off it's, it's an honor to be in the house you know i'm 
uh, we talked a little bit earlier about your record collection. Uh, I, I've yet to go into that mode, but uh, I do have a couple questions. I'll start from there, just off of what I see in front of me. You got three albums that you would have to save from a fire, right? Whew. Everything's gonna go, but you have enough time to save three albums. Okay. What three albums are you going after? Uh, I'm going Reasonable Doubt because you can't find it anywhere. That's not gonna be mm. uh, reprinted ever again. Uh, it's extremely rare. I'm going Illmatic because it is the greatest body of hip hop work of all times. Um, and I'm going <sighs> Tribe Called Quest, Midnight Marauders. Oh, okay. And I'm going Rhapsody, Layla's Wisdom. <laughs> oh, so, so basically everything I can see behind me. Okay. Discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with Broco TV Productions. From the artistry of photography to the magic of videography, the world of podcast production, exclusive red carpet services, captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Broco TV Productions now at 919-714-9905. And be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocodetvproductions.com. We're here to make any room better. Right, 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 right. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I would agree with three of those. So, right, um, right, right. Now, on your website, shop what is it? shopgladdad.com. Yes, sir, shopgladdad.com. That's it. There's a, a shirt that I've, I've seen and a sweater mm-hmm. that has, you know, I think it's either five or six TV fathers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who would you say are the best, we'll narrow it to three, mm-hmm. TV dads of all time and why? Wow. Um, I'm going to go unconventional, right? I'm going to go, because in my heart of hearts, I am, uh, what's my man, what's, what's Terry Crews' name when everybody hates Chris? Um, I was oh, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, I forgot. Uh, it's Rochelle it. and, uh, what's his name? Rochelle and... What's the dad name, man? Ah, I'm looking at him, too. Her name is Rochelle. His name is... You have to edit this up, man. <laughs> we Rochelle and... Ju- Ju- no, not Junior. Uh, Julius. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Julius, man, because Julius... Julius the man. He can count how much milk... Listen, listen, God, listen. Born, when, it get, when it get low, <laughs> Julius know how to save a dollar. So I'm... You got a coupon. <laughs> everything. And that's my, that's my type of carrying on right there. You feel me? Okay. Like, All right. So Julius, uh, Cliff Huxtable, mm. um, and I would probably say James Evans. Uncle um, Phil. I'm going to go... Nah, James Evans uh, get to... Yeah. Oh, that's right. James I'm, Evans, I'm yeah, 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 nah, James, James Evans, man, James, James could, could, could make something out of nothing at the drop of a hat, man, oh, man. and he wanted to keep Black Jesus in the house, so, yeah, you know, <laughs> he wanted to keep, he wanted to keep Black Jesus mm-hmm. up, so yeah, I'm going to go Julius, Cliff, James. Now, now, Cliff and James, I get, Julius, you're right, is a little bit of a... A, a, a stretch edition. What was it about him that overtook, you know, he know how to Carl say, Winslow listen, and all that? He know how to save money. Like, yeah. that's it. That's the only, he knows how to save If you ask anybody in my house, man, hmm. if it's too many lights on around here, <laughs> we turn these lights off. <laughs> if, it's, if we go to the grocery store and it costs too much money, we got to figure out how we can get it a little bit cheaper. I got my food line saving earn coupons on my, on my phone. <laughs> I'm cheap, man. What can I say? I'm cheap. That's it. I'm frugal. I, I want to save a buck, man. Oh. Well, while we're on the topic of Glad Dad, talk to me about the inspiration behind that part of your platform. Yeah, like, yeah. Where did that come from? Yeah, so um, Glad Dad was something that I had been kind of working on for, for, for years, right? So I've been working in the fatherhood field, um, responsible fatherhood probably about my daughter's 20 so probably about 17 years now man 18 years 17 Mm -hmm. 18 years um i got a call from a good friend of mine who was working in fatherhood shout out my man uh matt matt cruz uh matt was working in fatherhood 
and he knew a little bit about my story and um, he asked me to come out and speak out to California about fathers. So after that, I kind of got the bug and I started a a, 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 a blog site so actually called the Single Fathers Blog at the mm -hmm. time. I was big on blogging. Uh, so I had a Single Fathers Blog and it was all about uh, single fathers and, you know, topics about single fatherhood and how I was raising my daughter as, you know, was a single father because her mm -hmm. mother and I weren't married. Um, we had shared custody. Well, I was, I was single. I wasn't married. I was a single father. Mm -hmm. And um, once I got married, I was like, well, I can't be the single father anymore. So I can't do that because I'm married now. Uh, so then I just decided to kind of change the positioning and change the um, branding of what I was doing to the glad dad. Um, and that kind of just, just kind of took off. And then my son was born and, you know, just kind of, just kind of worked and, um, really have been pushing the glad dad for maybe about five years now. Mm. It, it well, was, no, no, no. It's gotta be more than that because my son is, my son is sick. So mm -hmm. yeah, probably about six or seven years now. Yeah. And speaking of your son, you know, the, the, the kid's a genius. From from the little I saw, he I, he you I, know, he he he's doing multiplications <laughs> in the you know the 13, 13 time stuff. Yeah, range. He loves math, man. You know, I forget what the number was, but it has forty four zeros in it. One hundred trillion, I think he said. Yeah. One hundred trillion. <laughs> Listen, I, I live with him, so I, I know. I know. <laughs> I've heard it before. Yeah, yeah. I was just as uh, taken aback as you were. <laughs> now, it's one, it's one of them joints that got 49 zeros behind it. He can tell you that, too. Right. He'll tell, he'll tell you that, too. Like, so, yeah, man. The boy is, God, God is good, man. The boy is, is, is excellent in math. And um, he just, that's my man, man. You know, I, I, w I was privileged and honored to, I celebrated my son's birthday this weekend. He turned two. Congratulations. Yeah, Congratulations. I appreciate it. Did the whole party, first haircut thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, know, you had mentioned that Maceo was on the spectrum. How, mm -hmm. how did you first identify that? And, and how does that change, we'll say, his dynamics of, of you know, challenges or things that you have to focus yeah. more on? And just talk to us about... I don't want to call it a condition, but you know, life as a father, man, yeah. living with a child and raising yeah, so, a child that is on the spectrum. Right. So Maceo is he is um, on the autism spectrum. He's mm -hmm. neurodiverse as opposed to being neurotypical. Um, so when he was about maybe two and a half, maybe two, um, we started noticing that there were some delays in his speech. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't um, saying things that, you know, kids his age, he just, there were certain milestones that we didn't necessarily feel like he was hitting, mm -hmm. right? He wasn't, he wasn't able to point yet. He wasn't able to say the things, some of the things that some of his peers were um, saying. Now, mind you, all of this is also during COVID, mm -hmm. right? So Mace never, um, he was never in daycare because at the time I was working in radio and I was, um, at home during the day. So he would be at home with me during the day. Um, and his mom would come home pre COVID. His mom would come home and we would just kind of basically trade off. So he wasn't around a lot of other kids. Mm -hmm. So we were kind of like, all right, well, he ain't really around other kids. Like, uh, you know, maybe, maybe not. So we talked to his pediatrician um, and he got diagnosed. Well, no. We talked to his pediatrician and Wake County has a program where they'll come out and do like an assessment. So they did the assessment on him. I want to say he was two, maybe two and a half. I can't remember. They came out, they did the assessment on him and his speech was delayed. I can't remember the numbers, but his receptive and his expressive communication were both delayed like a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so we were like, oh, okay, cool. All right. But again, he's not in daycare. Mm -hmm. So he, he's not a, like these tests are made up for kids who are having, you know, certain amounts of interaction with other kids. Mm -hmm. So once he turned three during COVID, we had a virtual um, assessment done. And in that virtual assessment, um, they told us, <clears throat> excuse me, they told us that he was on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. But in that same token, at 18 months, Maceo could read, right? Like, and I mean, like read, like huh. to the point where 
we're in the interview with the uh, with the psychiatrist or the doctor who did the diagnosis, and we're telling him like, yo, like my man can read, and the doctor was like, oh, I'm sure he can memorize some. He's memorized. Some. I'm like, no, 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 no. My man can read. Like, wow. hold on for a second. I'm gonna get this book that he's never seen before, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you, like, because huh. I'm an advocate for my child. Like, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Right. So my man gets the book, makes blah 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 blah. He goes through it and he's but 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 like running through the book. You know what I mean? At at right at three years old, wow. running through the joint. So I'm like, nah, this is what I mean. Like, he's not memorizing words. He can read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, feel me? So they, you know, did their assessment let us know that you know they felt like he was on the autism spectrum um and we were like all right word like that's perfectly fine because we our concern was like all right now we have this how can we get him the services that he needs mm -hmm. how can we get him what he needs to make sure that he has everything going forward to flourish and to thrive uh before getting into kindergarten mm -hmm. discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with broco tv productions from the artistry of photography to the magic of videography, the world of podcast production, exclusive red carpet services, captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Broco TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocodetvproductions.com. We're here to make any room better. I asked the question <clears throat> somewhat selfishly as uh, you know, my little man's not necessarily uh, speaking in a manner of like the other children. I, mm -hmm. I recognize mm -hmm. it more so when I have other children around and so we had this birthday party and we've got a bunch of two and three year olds there and they're talking to each other and yelling and saying, you know, I'm okay and mm -hmm. thank you and please. And, and my, my guy is still doing the, eh, eh, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, gesturing to what he wants. And, you know, he can say no. I, I yeah. know that much, but yeah. I, I, I didn't know whether or not it would be too early, mm -hmm. you know, to, to put him through some sort of exam similar to what your son is. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's, listen, man, it's so easy for us to get caught up in like comparison mm -hmm. and comparison is the thief of joy mm -hmm. you feel me and for me i'll tell you man i was like i was like the youtube king mm -hmm. to the point where i don't even think my wife know that you know there was points in time i'm like what does autism look like mm -hmm. like youtube and you know what i mean mm -hmm. like what are traits of autism you know what i mean mm -hmm. and then that you know as we go to the the, the physician and we go through the process with the uh, occupational therapist and, and, and all of this stuff, they tell you like certain things to look out for. You know what I mean? Like they tell you, okay, well he sits this way or he holds his hands this way. Those are typical traits in a child who is on the autism spectrum. But it's just that, like it, it is a spectrum, mm -hmm. right? And it is so wide and it's so vast and we come from a generation where those types of things aren't talked about. Mm -hmm. they, they, if, if we do think that something is going on with our child, we don't necessarily want to ask for yeah. help figuring out what it is because there's a stigma. But every child, man, like you see mates, like if I didn't tell you that he was on autism spectrum, like you wouldn't even know, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm thinking he's like nine, 10 years old. You wouldn't even know. <laughs> But you also wouldn't know that this is a child who, like, couldn't pronounce certain words. Like, if I show you videos from when he was, you know, two, 18 months, three years old, mm -hmm. when he can't pronounce words or he was like he was just making sounds, you wouldn't believe this is the same child. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think every child develops differently. I think society conditions us to want to kind of expedite that process mm -hmm. and we see these kids on social media and they're doing all of this stuff and we yeah. see you know uh these kids on america's got talent and they <laughs> yeah. singing and doing cartwheels and handstands and they two years old man i don't pay that stuff no attention mm -hmm. my baby gonna, gonna gonna grow at his pace he gonna do what he gonna do when he's ready 
And there's nothing that anybody can do that's going to change that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I think as fathers, man, it, it, it can be easy to get caught up in that. Right. Because we want to experience uh, what we think it should be. But what it really should be is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like that, what it is, is what it should be. That moment that we're in right now is what it's supposed to be. That's what our parenting journey looks like. And as your kids get older, it's always going to be something that makes you think, well, uh, uh, why they ain't doing this? Yeah. Why they not doing that? Why they not valedictorian? Why, you know what I'm saying? Like always something that's going to make you like not be in the moment and that's the one thing that i've learned man as a parent as a dad is to be in the moment because we can't change what tomorrow is going to be we can't change what yesterday going to be mm -hmm. all we got is the moment that we in yeah. and just as a dad like that's really all we can do that's all we can be yeah. as you're educating other families fathers mothers you've you've dropped a number of gems just today but is there a a topic that you feel people struggle most with uh, and or, you know, what is something that you go in saying, you know, if there's nothing else I want these individuals to know, it's this. Like, what, what? I think I think there's a lot of things. I don't I don't I don't think it's just one thing. Mm -hmm. One of the things is um, our ability to connect with that younger generation. Mm -hmm. um, and that connection is it it it's it's changed a lot, man. I'm I'm fortunate enough to have I call it my bookend. So my 20 year old, and it, this is something I've been thinking about. My six year old is nothing like my 20 year old was at six. Mm -hmm. When I say they couldn't be more opposite at that age, mm -hmm. my six my my my, my daughter. Like if if she if you were to come in here and you know how Mace came down and he talking to you, yeah. my daughter at six she would no one would even be here you would even she would be quiet as a mouse mm -hmm. right she didn't want to talk to nobody she didn't want to have no conversation for you we would have we would go into place and I would be like yo like when people ask you your name like tell them your name <laughs> like I would have to like coach her into having these conversations where him he is. Mr. Personality, like he gonna come into the room, he gonna light the room up, he gonna ask you what he wanna know, he gonna say the thing. Yeah. Um, so that connection is, it's different. And we have to f meet them where they are, mm -hmm. right? If nothing else, we have to meet them where they are. Me raising a 20 year old, I'm not even raising a 20 year old now, like me having a 20 year old, <laughs> right. I have to meet her where she is. So my conversations with her at 20, are totally different than the conversations at 18, at 17. Mm -hmm. My conversations and my interactions with Mace have to meet him where he is. And oftentimes we get so caught up in being in our world and wanting our kids and wanting our people to come into our world that we we forget that we gotta sometimes get to where they are, right? And and having a child that's on the spectrum has has taught me that, right? I I I have to go into his world, mm. right? I can't always be like, oh, okay, well, you have to come into my world, right? If, if, if you're in a space where you're not making eye contact at six years old, I can't say, I need you to look at me all the time if I'm trying to discipline you, mm. because that's not your world, yeah. right? Your brain doesn't process things like that. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with the way you think. It's just different than the way that I was raised. It's different the way that my brain processes things. But as the adult in the situation, as the elder statesman in the situation, so, you know, just as a parent, man, just a part of it is just meeting them where they are, stepping into their world and not always expecting them um, to come into our world. Because, like, we're the adults. Like, we're the grownups. Yeah. Um, and our brains work differently. Our brains are wired differently. So that's just one of the things that I think that um, we all have to do is, is, is a better job of meeting our young people where they are. So earlier in the conversation, you were talking about how you struggle to take vacations. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can identify with that too. Um, I'm gone a lot, but you know, it's a day here, day there, traveling for work, and I feel like that's my, my vacation. Where would you go? Like, what's, what, what do you think is kind of your, your money's no object? I don't know, man. What are people be going? Tulum, man, where they go? <laughs> <laughs> where they go? Tulum. Take me to Tulum, baby. 
Um, Belize. I don't even know. Where did the people go? I don't. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know what the like the cool vacation spots are. I just know what I see on Instagram, man. Okay. And if if I if I see it on Instagram, I I, I assume that it's cool. Well, we're going to have to put some pictures of Tulum, the Maldives. Yeah, the Maldives. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up somewhere where you can't it, what's, but help but walk by it. What's the, what's the place that they go where it's real cold? And they take. Me either, but they, look, <laughs> but they got, but they got the, 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 the hot tub yeah, joints. Yeah, 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 I know you're talking about. I'm sure it's Antarctica or Sweden or something. Somewhere, man. Oh, me and my, something me, like that. About a year or so ago, me and my wife was looking, and it was like three people that we none of like they weren't connected but they were all in this like in this place and i'm like they must have had a, like jet blue must have had a discount or something <laughs> <laughs> discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with bro code tv productions from the artistry of photography to the magic of videography the world of podcast production exclusive red carpet services captivating mc services inspiring speaking engagements expert panel discussion curation and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Bro Code TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocodetvproductions.com. We're here to make any room better. Well, as I, as I close, man, you're a jack of all trades doing a number of different things. Um, What's next? Like, well, not necessarily just kind of from a legacy perspective, but you know, what, what's next for Mr. Chavis? Yeah, man, I'll tell you. Um, next is we're gonna scale Glad Dad up to a uh, hundred million dollar business. Huh? That's 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 the goal, man. We are doing um, some work out here in terms of connecting with the schools across the country, traveling, speaking. Um, Really, the goal is to is to turn it into an ed tech company where there's a technology piece to it. Of course, you know we got the Glad Dad merch. So my goal is to really, really scale uh, Glad Dad into a company that is a household name, um, something that spreads the word of responsible fatherhood, responsible parenting. Um, dads in the class. We haven't talked about that. So dads in the class mm -hmm. is our initiative to help. Uh, schools connect with uh, fathers and get fathers engaged in the classroom and uh, get fathers involved in their kids education more than they have been so just really really pushing that man and really helping helping folks connect with these young people and how can people connect with you and the work that you're doing you, you threw out one of the websites before yeah it's so a couple things you can listen to the podcast the black people parenting podcast the dads in the class podcast uh, you can hit up the website DionChavis.com You can email me Dion at DionChavis.com I'm on all social media At The Glad Dad uh, On Instagram At Glad Dad Dion You can choose <laughs> hey, Well you, you heard it You know, First off book this man to come speak For sure You know Listen to what this guy's got to say on the on the on the, the podcast, the radio. He he he's everywhere doing everywhere. his thing. It's everywhere. an honor to be here with you. I'm I'm gonna take a little bit of the gems. I'm gonna try to stay patient in, to. in terms of my child rearing. Got to. Got um, to. But no, I really appreciate just the time that you're giving us today. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. Patience is the key. Until next time, man. This is Bro Smith. We're signing off here on the Community Spotlight. Mr. Chavis, we talk about a lot, man. But our show, our platform is called the Bro Code. For sure. Oftentimes, when you hear that word, you think of a set of values or standards that you would treat yourself or others by. But when you hear that word, the bro code, what thoughts come to mind? Um, for me, I think the things that I think about is a, 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 a set of values that um, you can use in your life to take you anywhere. Right. I think it, it is about being true and being authentic to yourself and um, to those around you. Right. So that could be your brothers. It could be your family. It could be your classmates, your co-workers. It is about being authentic, being genuine to everyone um, that you come in contact with. Mr. Chavis, man, 
My grandmother used to say words matter. I loved her, man. I'm grandma's baby. Mm. Yeah, man. Baby boy. Yeah, man. I am. I'm grandma's baby. She also collected $2 bills, bro. So, to separate us from the rest, anybody can press record. But we believe that uh, we use this $2 bill as a keepsake. One, it's rare, it's unique, and we believe our guests are just that. We also asked you, what's one word you would use to describe yourself? And before the show, you told us, innovator. Mm -hmm. Now, you could have picked anything, bro. Tell us why. Why did you pick innovator? I picked innovator, honestly, man, because my wife um, said it the other day about me. She was talking to my son, and she specifically said, Daddy is an innovator. And, of course, my son being as curious as he is at six, year old, at six years old, asked, what is an innovator? And she broke it down um, in terms of how I am always coming up with new ideas and, 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 and new ways of doing things, um, primarily to support our family, right? And I thought about how it doesn't matter, it hasn't mattered in the past, what I have had to do um, in order to be here for my family. I have created um, innovative ways to do things, whether it be <laughs> getting off of the radio at night and driving Uber um, to make ends meet, whether it be creating the, the Glad Dad brand um, just based off of my experience and um, my duties as a father, um, creating podcasts and just, you know, creating an online record store. We uh, sell records every every day. Honestly, who would have ever thought that you could make a living selling vinyl records? I think those are um, all innovative things, but something that I never thought about until she said it. Like, I never thought of myself in that uh, in that space, so I never used that word to describe myself. But when you, when I sat back and thought about it, I was like, "Huh, these are pretty innovative things." I'm an innovator, so. There's <laughs> <laughs> another one. I add that to the belt of things. Well, we want to present this to you, man. And Thank our you, hopes sir. Is that it'll be somewhere? It's one. Oh, this is real. You. This is real money. Yeah, it's real money, bro. We're gonna play no games right here. Hold that joint up to the light. Mm. Real money, run it up. Run it up run oh, yeah, up. yeah, 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 yeah. Dion, you just got off the dopest show. It's out of the Mason Dixon line. It's called the Bro Code Show Community Spotlight. It is exclusively produced by Bro Code TV Productions. Yeah. Tell the people your experience on the show. Hey, man, it's Dion Showtime, Mr. Talk of the Town. Chavis, uh, media personality. Just wanted to say that the Bro Code Show, the Bro Code Productions. They came out and did phenomenal work, phenomenal work in terms of the community spotlight. They were professional. They were on time. Uh, couldn't have asked for a better presentation. They made me feel comfortable in every sense of the way. Um, it was just a great experience. I would recommend them for any of your media needs, any of your podcasting needs, any of your videography, cinematography, uh, anything that you need uh, in terms of video, in terms of content, the Broco Productions is where to get it done. All right. Peace.